Stop trying to help God out. Stop trying to help God out. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, on this beautiful, beautiful Monday. Hope everybody's doing well. When we try to help God out, one of the biggest mistakes we can make in our life, and sometimes we get to the point where we think we know what's best for us. I always like to say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And I want to go back to Abraham and Sarah for a moment and Hagar and use this, you know, this story as something we could live and learn from. And we all know that Sarah couldn't bear children. And God already told them they was going to have a child, but seemed like they got impatient. And we all know that Ishmael, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing through this, we know that Ishmael was Abraham's oldest son, the first son of Abraham and Hagar, not Sarah. And if you don't know who Hagar was, the psalm say Hagar, I want to pronounce it. That was the Egyptian handmaid of Sarah. And we all know, like I say, Sarah was, was Abraham's wife. And since at that time, Sarah couldn't buy those children. So Sarah told her husband to go ahead and sleep with Hagar. Now, notice I said Sarah told him to do that. Now, once again, let's put a pen right there. He listened at the woman. Let's bag back up to Adam for a moment. Adam, listen at Eve. See, man, we can learn a lot from this. And I'm not saying this to say we are all this and all that. And we, you know, supposed to be so controlling with a woman and all that. What I'm saying is when God give us things to do, when he tells us to listen at him, follow his steps. And when we don't, and we start listening at any and everybody else, the worst mistakes we can make in our life. So Sarah told Abraham, Sarah, Sarah, we all know her name means what? I'll let y'all answer that. What does Sarah name mean? And Abraham didn't like some of the stuff Sarah did. And I get so much out of this. That's why I say when we try to help God out, we make the biggest mistakes in our life. How many times in our life have we been just like the children of Israel, impatient, just like they did with Moses? You know, God done already brought us out of so much, and then we still complaining. And God can't stand people that complain. He hates murmuring and complaining. He showed us that even in the beginning, and we mess up so bad. So by Sarah doing what she did and Abraham listening to her caused some confusion. So we all see how this was all messed up from the start. And Hagar had to get away from Sarah. Now ain't that something you first you tell you tell your husband to go ahead and, 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 and sleep with this woman, you know, but when the woman becomes pregnant. Now you mad at the woman and you mad at the son. And here it is, innocent child. Didn't even ask to be here. Let me put a pen right there. It's a lot of favoritism going on, my brothers and sisters. When you start saying who you're going to like as your child and who you're not going to like, big mistake. Big mistake. So like I said, it was all messed up from the start. And when we try to help God out, we learn our lesson, don't we? And I bet you Abraham learned his lesson see Sarah told Abraham after all this to, to cast out that slave woman with her son and that her son Ishmael would not be in their family. She didn't want Ishmael in the family, really. If you just break this down because she loved Isaac because Isaac was her, was her own, but not Ishmael. She did not like the fact that Hagar got pregnant because Sarah we know the age of Sarah and Abraham, and that made Abraham mad what Sarah did. See, Abraham cared about Sarah, but one thing he didn't like, Abraham didn't agree with her when she said that, because that was Abraham's son. Yes, even though, you know, Ishmael wasn't by Sarah, but that was still Abraham's son.
And I can see Abraham saying, how are you going to try to send my son? How are you going to try to send Hagar and my son away? Hmm. See, he had compassion for Ishmael. He did not like what his wife did. Said to him. But Sarah wanted Hagar and Ishmael gone. All this is in Genesis 21. And just keep reading. And God, but see, God met up with Abraham, didn't he? And he spoke to Abraham. And he said, you know what, Abraham? Son, don't be displeased. Do not do not displeased because, because the boy and because of your slave woman. Mm, God told Abraham to do what Sarah said. Look at God. Look at God. Do what Sarah said, Abraham. Son, just do what she said because God is so good, my brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters. Not only was Isaac blessed, but he also blessed Ishmael too. Just because that was Abraham's seed. Father Abraham. And we all know what Abraham's name means. Blessed. He, he, he blessed Ishmael too. Now some people might not agree with that when I say that, but I'm going to ask y'all a question, and y'all can leave me this in the comment. Did God only just bless Isaac, or did he bless Ishmael also? Because that's your child. See, to me, Abraham um, didn't go against God's will. He just kind of, to me, made a mistake of, of, of listening to his wife. And sometimes, men, we got to be careful. Who we listening to. And I'm not just talking about women. We got to be careful who we listening to. Period in this life. But look at God still blessing Abraham. In spite of. And. God promised to make a whole nother nation. From Ishmael. To be fulfilled. Y'all remember when the Bible said. Ishmael had 12 sons. Who presided over 12 tribes. And we all know those names. If you ever studied the word of God. But look at how Abraham still obeyed the Lord though. And you know that was hard for him to send Hagar. Hagar. How you want to pronounce it. And his son away. Now I don't even know if Abraham ever saw his son Ishmael ever again. You know after that. After he sent them away. Because the Bible showed us that Ishmael appeared at Abraham's burial. Now, wouldn't there be some men, and, and I know some of y'all can relate to this. Some of y'all have done this. To never see your son again. Hmm. See, it's some, it's some sons that have never seen their father. But check this out. Abraham died. Now, how is it I created this baby and never saw him again, and then he's at my funeral? Do that make sense? So once again, when you tie all this in together, it's going to boil down to this. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God don't need our help like that. Stop trying to help God out. This also shows us don't try to figure out God and his ways. When God do certain things, we just can't really understand it. And you have to be willing, and I'll close after this, you have to be willing to give up your personal desires in order to follow the Lord. The Bible told us that Ishmael was going to be a wild man. The Bible said his hands will be against every man. Y'all know how, how that is? And then it said, and every man hand against him. See, God showed Abraham that Ishmael was not the promised one to receive the inheritance in so many ways. And now, well, I'm not going to get out into that because that's, that's a whole other video. This is why I teach so much about Israel. A lot of people think these videos are just fairy tales when I'm talking about Israel and, and, and you know, the lands and Jerusalem. And, they, oh, it's a, it's a game to some folks. But I'm going to tell you something in the long run. Every knee shall bow. And every time must confess that he is Lord. God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what I say now. If you can't push, pull. If you're not going to pull, get on out of the way. God bless you.
God keep you. Have a wonderful day.